Hello people of the tubes and welcome to talking about the level generation in the Binding of Isaac. So first out we start out with a single room and each room would have a determinate number of well neighboring rooms and it would be random so you start out with the first room and for each possible door you, you have a, a random check and then you, you place a room there. You repeat this until you have the desired number of rooms. The thing is that at this point these rooms they aren't they don't have anything in them they're just just straight up blank rooms which is a a different approach to to it than you would assume so you have this map now and by the way at any point this process could start over from the beginning if it messed up and that's why the loading times could potentially be infinite but uh, realistically they're not likely to be infinite in fact it, it's like winning the lottery if you if you play Binding of Isaac and it, it loads forever and it never finishes a level, how inconvenient. So we have this map of blank rooms and then we decide, well we have special properties for some of the rooms. We note which rooms don't have any, they only have one neighbor, the one that, that spawned them I guess. So these are end rooms and we, we pick which end room has which important thing in it. So you'll, you'll see that, that shops and items, they would always be end rooms because they don't have neighbors. Except for secret rooms. Secret rooms would be placed after the fact and they could possibly connect the item room to, well, another room. So you, you could go to the item room without using a key, using a secret room. Well, you've probably seen that already if you know anything about the Binding of Isaac. It's a fairly common strategy. So essentially we've got these, these rooms and, and we pick the, the one that's furthest away from the starting room, the end room that's furthest away from the starting room, to place the boss. But because every room has the same size, the boss room would still be a small room. But I guess that makes sense. That were the limitations of the time. Or, or should I say my limitations? Because I only programmed in Flash up until that point. So here we go. Binding of Isaac made in Flash. So now we see that the Binding of Isaac original has a, a different way of making levels. Because it's pretty clear that in Binding of Isaac Rebirth, they actually decided to make specific rooms that have locked off doors so they could probably only do that by starting out already putting each room in the place it's going to be so no more creating a map of empty rooms and then filling them in like i guess they they just start making each room they have thin rooms too and all kinds of different possibilities but the rooms still adhere to a grid so it still goes nicely onto the map so the way this is done is by starting out with the room as before but now the room already has a layout so you already know which one of the doors are going to be acceptable to have further rooms spawned from them so now when you spawn a new room you pick from the list of existing rooms and then you put one in that has a door on that side that you're starting out and you probably even want to make sure that you don't use the same room too often in the same level. Maybe not even once. So there's all kinds of limitations and you'd think this would be worse. But my original Binding of Isaac made it even worse because, well, it got stuck a lot. I guess the, the map was on a, a grid, but the grid was fairly small. So in the later levels, it would take forever till it actually finds a, a layout that would fit in in the, the grid of how big the map would be and still have all the rooms in it that are decided for a level of that size. You would think it would be a fairly simple process of just making a map, but I'm pretty sure I also had it so that each room would at the start decide whether or not it would have a room created from this door and the other door, and then it would forget. It, it, it would make that decision permanently instead of keeping those open doors as a possibility in case we need more more rooms so there you go it's a fairly inconvenient process a fairly inefficient algorithm that creates the the layouts and it just has a lot of repetition until it finally gets it right and then we have the random rooms that we see in binding of isaac and it, it still picks out of a list of rooms that would fit we have the Basement 1 and Basement 2, for example, which is two iterations of the same level. And we have a, a, a large list, well, not a too large list, I don't know, it's like 120 rooms. They range from easy to hard, and there's medium ones. So Basement 1 will have easy and medium rooms, whereas Basement 2 will have hard and medium rooms. So you have the same layout, same randomness, but it could have different levels of difficulty. Well, originally I didn't put any more 
balance into it, but I could have also made it so that it would have a counter of the difficulty of each room and then it would have an overall difficulty that it could count to. Maybe it could even keep track of how many enemies there are so that you can make sure that each level has this number of enemies or whatever. All of things that I didn't do because the Binding of Isaac original is just a whole lot of random and somehow it works out. You could you could go to the very hardest level and it would be like a boss on, a, on every room and they would end up being repeated even. <laughs> you could even see the same boss in, in neighboring rooms, so there you go. Well, we all start out somewhere. Next time I'll surely do it better. But you can already play Rebirth and they already do it better, so there you go. But then again, I guess you do go into the into the chest and then you see the dark one and then the next room also has a dark one. Oh no! <laughs> well, that's the Binding of Isaac for you. Just a lot of dark ones. <laughs> oh no. But anyways, Binding of Isaac is a fairly small game and it has some imperfections. The level generation is a, a good feature, but it has some flaws. It could be faster, but you wouldn't notice it being much faster. So even my in imperfect way of doing it is gonna work out fine. Because it only happens once, the level generation, at the start of each level. And it's not too big of a deal if the performance is bad. So there's nothing that could hold you back from making a game of your dreams. The only thing holding you back would be perfectionism. And maybe laziness in my case. Oh no. So here we go, I finally talked about game design, about a game that I made. I really should do this more. If you if you have any I, any concepts you want me to talk about, any kind of game design, I really should do it more because I know a lot about game design, but I don't know if I'm relevant enough to talk about it, so... Well, let me know what you think. Subscribe!